Greetings traders and welcome back. Have you ever wondered why it seems so darn difficult to stay disciplined while you're trading? Because on paper, trading is very simple. All we are looking to do is buy something that is undervalued and perhaps sell it at a better price. Seems pretty easy. What's the catch? Well, in reality, it is very difficult to stay disciplined, and in today's survival guide, we're going to be discussing exactly why that is. So stay tuned, and let's get going. Do you ever wonder what makes you buy too late and sell too early? Or do you ever feel yourself chasing after investments when your mind is telling you at the same time to just ignore it? The real question to ask is what is the cause of all of this? Why is it so difficult to stay disciplined? Starting off with the short answers, let's take a look at the subjects. We have emotions, boredom, health, ego, lack of experience, no structure slash focus, lifestyle, and the fact that we are all different. But let's stop back and take a look at the emotions. The best traders know how to tap into their instincts while ignoring raw emotions. These emotions may be tied to the trading itself or they could just be a part of their everyday life. Learning to filter out peripheral issues that can put you in an unfavorable state of mind is a solid foundation for your trading career. It's a good idea to practice staying cool when considering any investment. Unfortunately, this is always easier said than done, but with time, practice, and patience, we will improve. Then we have another branch of that called boredom. Boredom is really just another expression of emotion. It's the concept of we are getting bored, we haven't seen action in a while, and we feel that we are going to get in a trade to spice up our lives. Obviously, we are exchanging the likelihood of making a good decision with the return of gaining that excitement and that stimulus. As strange as it may seem, health is also an important factor. Think of it like this. If we were walking into the room and we stubbed our toe, maybe it was a really violent stub and we now have three broken toes. Do you really feel that you'll be able to trade at the same level of collection, the same level of fortitude that you would if you weren't experiencing all of that pain? Next comes the ego. Contrary to popular belief, there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of ego, at least I feel. Confidence goes a long way, as long as you don't let it rule your life. The moment that you believe you know it all is likely the first stepping stone to disaster. That moment you stop listening to the market and instead start listening to your own flawed ego to prove these irrational things to yourself is usually the beginning of end, the end for many. Then we have the lack of experience. If you are able to keep a clear head while those around you lose theirs, you could have a successful trading career ahead of you. But unfortunately, if you have lack of experience, usually it is you that is not keeping it cool and calm and collected, while the more experienced are being less rattled and as such have a higher success rate because they're not dealing with as large of a burden on their back, or at least they're dealing with it in a more healthy manner. The more screen time you have, the more desensitized you will be to things that will cause you harm. Then we have no structure or focus. Whether investing or planning a career, the goal is always to stay organized. Successful traders will have not only an entry point for the next investment, but an exit point before they've even placed the trade in the first place. When traders keep the entry and exit points flexible, there's an underlying wiggling structure that generally hurts more than it helps in the trading community. And next, we have lifestyle. Whether we like it or not, it is difficult, if not impossible, to step away from your everyday life and go into trader mode. Consequently, if you have a relatively busy or complicated lifestyle, this can impact your trading results unless you are very good at compartmentalizing. Sometimes this can depend on your ability to set boundaries and make time. We don't want to let our family and friends distract us from trading, but we also don't want to allow our trading to distract us from our family and friends.
And lastly, we are all different. The way that we respond to certain stimulus as humans changes depending on who you are and what you've already experienced. It's important to understand this because it's important to build your own roadmap to success. You need to cater to what you're good at and be aware of what you're not good at. Now for everyone's favorite part, the tips. The first is that all work and no play is just flat out unhealthy. All things in moderation, folks. We need to remember this, including trading. We need to remember that too much trading can be bad. Even if we're making money, it won't be long if we're doing it too much that we're going to find diminishing returns. We're going to see a fall off in our efficiency because we're just giving ourselves a ragged run. We're going too hard. We need a break. Number two is play to your strengths. This means that if we're good at reading candlestick charts, or we're good at reading short time frames in the market, but we're not good at looking at long time frames in the market. Use that information to your advantage. Try to maximize your chances of success. We also have don't get greedy. Don't chase monetary numbers just because you want those monetary numbers. Make good trades because they are good trades. We also want to make sure to reward ourselves every once in a while. It feels good to be encouraged. It feels good to feel like we've achieved something and to be proud of ourselves. Those positive emotions can go a long way in the trading world, especially when there's so many other stressors involved. It helps to have some positive light in the darkness. And developing a routine is also a good idea because it allows us to be more systematic about our process. Even our routine can be systematically broken down and we can view at each activity in our routine as something that may be helping us or hurting us and adjust accordingly. We also want to take time to relax. This really goes hand in hand with the all work and no play is unhealthy side of things. It's important to put some time aside where we aren't going to be thinking or we're at least going to try not to think about trading. Then we have minimized distractions. This is really self-explanatory. If we are trading and all of a sudden a car alarm goes off right behind you, it's going to be very distracting and it's going to be hard to maintain your train of thought. So the more distractions we can minimize, the better off we're going to be. Next is get enough sleep. Sleep is so much more important than most people give it credit for. Getting enough sleep can go a long way when you're contributing in mental athletic abilities such as trading, you're thinking about the market in a mathematical sense perhaps, and your brain needs to have that sleep to stay functional. We also don't want to chase any trades. If we had a good idea and the market is proving that good idea correct, but we have it entered in, that doesn't mean that we get to enter in late if the good idea has already taken flight. Generally, that is not such a good idea. Next, we have don't seek revenge. The market, guys, is not, and gals, of course, is not a physical entity. It's not something that is physically coming over to you, holding a grudge against you, or perhaps poking you in the forehead. We don't want to hold revenge or have revenge trades where we feel like we're getting one back at the market because we just suffered a loss. Now we feel we have to throw a punch back and win twice as much. This is a very self-destructive type of behavior, and we definitely don't want to revenge trade. One of the most important things that we can do as traders is learn from our past experiences. This means that we'll no longer be insane, or at least not in the trading world, because we learn from what is happening and we're no longer doing the same thing but expecting a different outcome. This is so crucial to improving as a trader. This is why trading logs and trading plans matter so much, whether we like it or not, because it allows us to break down what is happening and analyze those results and adjust the next time we go in to make sure that not the same event happens again, or maybe we want the same thing to happen again. We analyze that this particular strategy is succeeding at this particular Rate, so we know it's okay to continue using that strategy. But learning from the past is just so darn important. And also, we want to adhere to the KISS method, the keep it simple, stupid method. It is the idea that the simpler something is, the more finesse we can have with it because we're not as bogged down by something that's overly complex. Keeping things simple and digestible is extremely important. And lastly, it's important to remember 
Never stop learning. Never stop stimulating your trading brain. Never stop trying to master new ways of improving yourself as a trader. And while you're at it, it doesn't hurt to improve yourself as a person, which is a byproduct of learning to control your ego as we discussed already. But until next time, thank you for joining me as always, folks. Good luck out there. I will see you all very soon.